Hi everyone! Today I will be informing you all about the disorder of kleptomania. Kleptomania's diagnostic code is 312.32F63.2. The diagnostic criteria for kleptomania is a recurrent failure to resist impulses to steal objects that are not needed for personal use or for their monetary value. Increasing sense of tension immediately before committing the theft. Pleasure, gratification, or relief at the time of committing the theft. The stealing is not committed to express anger or vengeance, and it is not in response to a delusion or hallucination. The stealing is not better explained by a conduct disorder, a manic episode, or antisocial personality disorder. Course and prevalence. Kleptomania is an impulse control disorder. Kleptomania can occur at any age and it usually begins in adolescence. However, it is rare for it to start occurring in late adulthood. There is little systematic information on the course of kleptomania, but three typical courses have been described. Sporadic with brief episodes and long periods of remission, episodic with protracted periods of stealing and periods of remission, and chronic with some degree of fluctuation. This disorder may continue for years despite multiple convictions of shoplifting. According to the DSM-5, kleptomania occurs in about 4% to 24% of individuals arrested for shoplifting. Its prevalence in the general population is very rare at approximately 0.3% to 0.6%. Females outnumber males at a ratio of 3 to 1. There does not appear to be any one social group in which kleptomania is most prevalent. Prognosis. Risk and prognostic factors. Genetics and physiological factors can play a role. Head trauma or a brain injury could also be factors as well. Currently, there are no controlled family history studies of this disorder. However, first degree relatives of persons with kleptomania may have higher rates of obsessive compulsive disorder, substance use disorder, and alcohol use disorder. Cultural considerations. All cultural considerations should be considered in treatment. Some cultural considerations include race, sex, gender, sexual orientation, age, ethnicity, religion, language, geography, values, goals, and SES. Although kleptomania is more common in females than males, there may be some gender bias in this finding because women who steal are more likely to get psychiatric evaluations, while men who steal are more likely to end up in jail or prison. Etiology. The term kleptomania was derived from the Greek words klepto, to steal, and mania, mad desire or compulsion. Its meaning roughly corresponds to compulsion to steal or compulsive stealing. <laughs> Historical facts. The French physician Philippe Pinel's favorite student was French psychiatrist Jean-Étienne Dominique Escriot. Escriot and his student Charles Marc were credited with inventing the term kleptomaniac. Escriot was the first to combine precise clinical descriptions with the statistical analysis of mental illnesses. The first reports of compulsive theft dates back to 1816. The Swiss physician André Mathé stating, unique madness characterized by the tendency to steal without motive and without necessity. Here are some more interesting facts and stats on kleptomania. Accurate statistics pertaining to kleptomania are difficult to determine because many individuals do not seek treatment or professional assistance. But we do know the following about the disorder. Approximately 1.2 million people in the United States suffer from kleptomania. 65% of individuals with kleptomania also suffer from bulimia. Kleptomania may be the cause of over 5% of shoplifting losses, which adds up to approximately $500 million in retail costs annually. 20% to 46% of individuals with this disorder 
also have other impulse control disorders. 23% to 50% of individuals also suffer from substance use. 45% to 100% of sufferers also suffer from mood disorders. The majority of persons suffering from kleptomania steal objects that are of little value. Many sufferers will throw out or give away the objects that they steal. Many patients with this disorder explain that they feel a sense of depersonalization, like being in a dreamlike state while they're performing the act. And the act of stealing is done independently and without the assistance of others. The five stages of impulsivity are urge, tension, act, relief, and guilt. Kleptomania may also result in or be associated with arrest, imprisonment, compulsive gambling or shopping, suicidal thoughts or behavior, and social isolation. Dopamine and serotonin deficits. Kleptomania may be linked to imbalances in chemicals like serotonin in the central nervous system. Serotonin helps regulate moods and emotions. Low levels of serotonin are common in people prone to impulsive behaviors. Kleptomania may also be related to addictive disorders. The act of stealing may release dopamine, which causes pleasurable feelings in those who suffer from kleptomania. This dopamine stimulation may partly explain why they steal over and over again. Assessment and differential diagnosis. Is the situation an ordinary theft or possible malingering? Ask questions about your client's impulses and how they make them feel. For example, ask what situations or feelings may trigger their episodes. In order to accurately differentiate and rule out other disorders, do not ask any leading questions. Assessment instruments may include psychological questionnaires and or self-assessments, and differential diagnoses may include antisocial personality disorder and conduct disorder. Episodes may occur during manic episodes, psychotic episodes, or as a result of a major neurocognitive disorder. One of the most unfortunate aspects of kleptomania is that it can turn otherwise law-abiding citizens into criminals. They constantly feel the urge to steal. Generally, sufferers will feel shame and guilt because of their compulsions. The emotional and legal consequences of kleptomania also affect the friends and families of the sufferers. Much like other mental disorders, the majority of the negative aspects of kleptomania revolve around emotions. The individuals will essentially feel powerless over their need to steal, and then they will be overwhelmed by self-loathing and humiliation. Often sufferers will question how something so wrong can make them feel so happy. These complications are generally what lead sufferers to experience other illnesses, such as self-mutilation and eating disorders. Treatments. Currently, no cure exists. However, treatment with therapy and medications are available. Kleptomania often goes untreated because of the stigma associated with it. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, has become the psychotherapy of choice for kleptomania. In general, CBT helps you identify unhealthy negative beliefs and behaviors and replace them with healthy positive ones. CBT may include the following techniques to help someone overcome the urge to steal. Covert synthesization, aversion therapy, and systemic desensitization. Other forms of therapy including psychodynamic therapy, family therapy, and or marriage counseling also may be helpful. Medications. There is minimal scientific research on the use of psychiatric medications to treat kleptomania but some medications seem to be helpful. The best medication for each individual depends on their overall situation and other conditions they may have, such as depression or OCD. Often the individual will benefit from taking a combination of medications to see what works best with the fewest side effects. However, it may take several weeks to notice the full benefits of the medication. Medications generally prescribed include antidepressants, such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, such as Prozac, Paxil, and Luvox, mood stabilizers, 
such as lithium, anti-seizure medications such as Topamax, Depakine, Stavazor, and Depakon. Addiction medications include Revia and Vivitrol. Case study. Laura is a white, 31-year-old, highly paid television and film actress living in Beverly Hills. Her friends say she has an impulsive personality and is a compulsive shopper. Laura says she feels tension, the urge to steal, and admits to shoplifting. She says for some reason, shoplifting gives her relief. She suffers from anxiety and depression, which she has experienced for approximately 12 days out of every month for the past year. Although respected and successful as an adult and considered a sex symbol by the media, when Laura was a child, she was constantly bullied by children who mistook her for an effeminate boy. Laura also suffers from aquaphobia because of a traumatic near drowning when she was 12. When asked to discuss her feelings of depression, Laura simply stated, you can't pay enough money to cure that feeling of being broken and confused. Laura may suffer from Laura may suffer from kleptomania. I have diagnosed Laura with kleptomania. The DSM-5 diagnostic code for kleptomania is 312.32 F63.2. Kleptomania is characterized by the following symptoms of which Laura exhibits. Laura has plenty of money. However, she cannot resist the impulse to steal. She feels tension immediately before committing the theft. Laura experiences relief as she shoplifts. Her stealing is not committed to express anger or vengeance, and it is not a response to a delusion or hallucination. Her stealing is not better explained by a conduct disorder, a manic episode, or antisocial personality disorder. Differential Diagnosis My differential diagnosis of Laura's condition is Other Specified Depressive Disorder, Recurrent Brief Depression, the DSM-5 Diagnostic Code for Other Specified Depressive Disorder, Recurrent Brief Depression is 311F32.8. Although Laura has symptoms of Other Specified Depressive Disorder, Recurrent Brief Depression, she does not meet the criteria for this disorder currently. Therefore, kleptomania best describes her current condition. I felt it important to mention my concerns of diagnosing someone too early because of the problems associated with labels and or stigmas, for example. Other specific and other unspecific diagnoses are good options to use for these cases or until another diagnosis can be made. Cultural considerations. Cultural considerations for Laura are her sex, gender, her age, her fame, and her SES. We know that women are affected by kleptomania by a three to one margin over men. Considering that kleptomania is rare in late adulthood, we should consider more narrow populations and look into the prevalence of kleptomania in women and men of her age group, 25 to 35, and of women in her age group compared to women in other age groups. Are there social pressures on women in her age group in particular, of any age in general, that make women more prone to stealing than men as a way of expressing some sort of internal problem or need? How does Laura feel about her fame? Is she comfortable with it, or does it make her anxious and uncomfortable? Does she view it as a prison or as a liberation? She says she feels relief when she steals. What is it that's being relieved? As a public figure, does she have to be so careful with her every move that she suppresses certain actions or emotions that a less famous person might not? Is her stealing the relief of built up pressures that she finally needs to release? What motivates her theft? What is lacking in her emotional makeup that requires the act of stealing for relief? Are there studies or empirical data that might give us a clue as to why Laura and others like her are willing to risk so much for so little? I would explore all the above cultural considerations in treatment. Famous people with kleptomania. 
Winona Ryder, a famous actress who had roles in films such as Beetlejuice, Heathers, and more recently the famous Netflix series Stranger Things, was convicted on November 6, 2002, in Beverly Hills for shoplifting more than $5,500 worth of high-fashion merchandise from a Saks Fifth Avenue department store. The jury found her guilty of felony grand theft and vandalism, but acquitted her of burglary. She was also fined, was ordered to reimburse Saks Fifth Avenue, and was advised to get counseling. Other famous people who suffer from kleptomania include Lindsay Lohan, Megan Fox, Britney Spears, and the late rapper Old Dirty Bastard. Alternative Treatments For alternative treatments, you can check out the Shulman Center and Kleptomaniacs Anonymous. Here is a short video about the Shulman Center. She is the mother of three, the wife of a police officer, a shoplifting addict who admits she's been breaking the law for years. And take note as you listen to her story. One in ten Americans is a shoplifter, probably someone you know. I have stolen TV stands um, and tables from my son's room. We're calling her Maria to protect her identity, but she could be anyone, your mom, your sister, or your daughter. She's getting treatment right here in Metro Detroit she hasn't been able to find anywhere else. Just months ago, she could not have been trusted to browse this store all by herself. I could probably find something to steal in every single store I went in. Maria has been married for 20 years. She's the mother of three children, and she's kept a dark secret for many, many years. Nobody knew. Um, and it's a very difficult thing because you continue to um, weave webs and tell lies. Her addiction as strong as any to drugs or alcohol. But Maria's crave? The rush of getting away with stolen goods. There's a high that comes with that. It's like a, a, a power, I guess. And there's a huge rush when you leave the store and your heart's racing and you're hoping that you know, security doesn't start beeping when you walk through the exit doors. For years, when Maria saw a store, she saw the merchandise inside and needed to steal it. You basically lead a secret life. If you spoke to any of my family or friends or my colleagues, they would tell you what a wonderful person I am. In her early 20s, she was busted. She went to jail. Remember, her husband is a cop. The bust was in her husband's jurisdiction. The police force that arrested me, fingerprinted me, and eventually drove me to jail was a police force that my husband worked for. So it was very, very humiliating for him as well. 90 days behind bars was enough to keep her from stealing for 16 years. Then, just three years ago, the demons returned. She started stealing again. Crisis again happened in my life, and uh, I started stealing. It, it became a daily addiction. Maria would stuff stolen items into this large purse or into reusable grocery bags. Other times, she would shoplift in plain sight. Believe it or not, because I don't look like a shoplifter, I put things into a cart and I walk out of the store. In October, Maria was arrested again, this time stealing ribs and other items from a grocery store. The arrest made it crystal clear her shoplifting wasn't about wanting things she could not afford, it was a full-blown addiction. Online, she looks for help and finds the Shulman Center right here in Detroit. Shoplifting is often a cry for help. It's a distress signal. Terry Shulman is an attorney and a counselor. And listen to this. He's also a former shoplifter. Now clean for 20 years, he treats shoplifting addiction. When I took something very impulsively, I got a bit of a, a sense of a high or an excitement or a sense of satisfaction, like because life was kind of not going my way, if I got something for nothing, in a strange way, it made me feel like things were back in balance for a moment. Shulman's treatment appears to be working for Maria. With his help, she's now hopeful about her future. I certainly have a long road to recovery, but I feel strong. Shulman says shoplifters can be rich or poor, young or old. Some are even famous celebrities, but many have a similar profile. They are usually caregivers of the family from a very young age who have a hard time vocalizing what it is they want because they are so used to caring for others. Kevin Dietz, Defenders. Research and Literature Then In the early 19th and 20th centuries, many articles on kleptomania stated that repressed sexual desires were at the root of the disorder. 
in an article written in 1911 by Austrian psychiatrist William Steckel, he explained, quote, the root of all of these cases of kleptomania is ungratified sexual instinct. These women are engaged in a constant struggle with their desires. They would like to do what is forbidden. Theft to them is a symbolic act. The essential point is that they do something that is forbidden, touch something that doesn't belong to them, end quote. In another article written in 1987 by Fishbane, discussed the first reported case of masturbation during shoplifting or directly after apprehension. It explained that, quote, kleptomania was a risk-taking response to depression and therefore can be thought of as a symptom relief mechanism, end quote. Research and literature now. Although there may be some truth to repressed sexual desires and kleptomania, today research and literature is more focused on brain structures, brain damage, the role of neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine, genetic factors, and environmental factors. The article, The Development and Treatment of Impulsivity, written in 2011, stated that some examples of these include, quote, poor neighborhoods with lower levels of informal social control and families marked by neglect, physical, sexual, and verbal abuses and coercive relationships, end quote. In another article, Treating Kleptomania, Cross-Cultural Adaptation of the Kleptomania Symptom Assessment Scale and Assessment of an Outpatient Program, discussed using multiple methods for treating kleptomania. The methods used were psychoeducation, motivational interviewing, self-assessment of stealing behavior, cognitive restructuring, emotions, coping, skill training, lifeline technique, reflecting upon kleptomania and its consequences, relapse prevention, and assessment of process, outcome, and continuing needs. Laws and legal definition. Kleptomania often has legal consequences. Between 64% and 87% of patients with kleptomania have been arrested, and 15% to 23% have been incarcerated after their crime. According to uslegal.com, kleptomania is the tendency to steal regardless of economic need. The tendency is driven by emotional disturbance rather than material need. Legally, kleptomania is not classified as insanity. Individuals are held responsible except when complete lack of control over their actions can be definitely established. Kleptomania cannot be considered a legal defense to stealing. Individuals are held responsible for their actions unless it can be clearly proven that they completely lack a sense of self-control. Those who successfully plead insanity may be ordered to attend a course of treatment in lieu of jail time. Many would rather spend time in a mental hospital than in prison. This is true because the sentence is usually less in a mental hospital than in prison. Typically, those who suffer from kleptomania are very secretive about their condition. Some may not even be aware of just why they have committed the crime. Was the theft an impulsive act or is the person trying to cover up his or her motives? Is kleptomania an actual disorder or an act of defiance? Laws versus exceptions. In the US, kleptomania is handled differently from state to state. For example, Maine and Ohio do not recognize kleptomania as a defense to theft. However, in Tennessee, one trial court used a woman's history of criminal behavior as an enhancing factor and her kleptomania diagnosis as a mitigating factor. Taking into account the need to protect the public from crime, along with the defendant's rehabilitation potential, the appellate court upheld the sentence but allowed her to serve it on probation. Looking ahead, it may be appropriate to divert offenders with kleptomania to problem-solving courts. These include drug courts, mental health courts, and even one gambling court that aim to treat the condition thought to underlie the criminal conduct. If you know anyone suffering from kleptomania, please try to ensure that they receive adequate help as soon as possible. Thanks everyone for a fantastic semester. 
I have truly appreciated all of your contributions, insights, comments, and perspectives. I wish you all the best in all of your future endeavors. Please click on the links below the video for more information.